Shadow Blade is a second level illusion spell found in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. It's a spell that is seemingly powerful, but the classes who have access to it don't have too many ways to maximize it. Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Inn, I'm your innkeeper, and today we'll be building a sorcerer who focuses on the spell Shadow Blade. We built an Artificer Mage who used Shadow Blade as its primary combat solution. We had to multi-class because the Artificer doesn't have access to Shadow Blade on its own. In the case of the Sorcerer, Shadow Blade is a native spell and that means that we won't need to multi-class to make this build work. But because Sorcerers don't get multi-attack, we definitely have to plan this build with that in mind if we want to keep up with the damage dealers of the party. So let's begin. Stat priorities are going to be Charisma, that's our main priority, at least initially. Then second priority is going to be Dexterity, and third priority is going to be Constitution. Strength, Intelligence, and Wisdom are going to be kind of dump stats right now. So at level one, you can pick whatever skills and background fit your character's story. It's not really impactful to the build at all. Race is also not really important to the build, although a class with some kind of built-in defensive capability like the Shatter Kai elf uh, with the Misty Step ability that they get, the Gnome with their mental save advantage against spells, the Halfling with their luck, that's a good one, or the Yanti or Satyr with their magic resistance. Those are going to be significantly helpful to your survivability, especially with such a fragile class. For Sorceress Origin, we're going to go with Shadow Sorcerer because it fits the Shadow Blade theme and it's also going to help maximize Shadow Blade if you happen to be fighting in the dark since as a Shadow Sorcerer you're going to have dark vision regardless of what race you selected. Shadow Sorcerer also has pretty good safety measure if you happen to be taken down in combat with Strength of the Grave. This ability is going to allow you to make a Charisma save if you drop to zero hit points by damage and drop to one hit point instead. This applies to most damage except on a crit or radiant damage. It's also not going to apply to spells or abilities that don't deal damage, but instead just reduce you to zero hit points. Something like a Banshee's Whale is something that this ability is not going to work against. Before we continue, I want to be clear as to exactly what this video series is. These are optimized builds that deal with flavor and optimization. They are not power player builds. so. Clearly, there's going to be better options or better selections that you'll notice as I'm going through my, my selections of this class or this character. And that is on purpose. I'm not trying to be a power gamer here with this build at all. Uh, I'm not a power gamer. I don't like playing that way. It's not fun for me. I'm not bashing it. It's not a bad thing. If that's what you want to play and that's what your group likes, great cool it's just not my style so surely there's going to be some suboptimal selections but overall this is a somewhat optimized build that also is does have some optimal choices and uh, they're you know they're chosen for either flavor or they're just a little bit more fun than something that's optimized anyways moving on uh spells sorcerers are spell specialists and because of that they don't get to learn a variety of different ones most good sorcerer builds revolve around going all in on one strategy. Luckily, since the Shadow Blade is just one spell, we can learn a few defensive spells and that'll help us survive since we're going to be pretty much a glass cannon. You know, four cantrips at first level, I recommend at least two to be offensive spells. This build is a damage dealer and having consistent damage available is going to be important. Even though cantrip damage is not the greatest, it'll at least help you be somewhat useful in the lower levels when fighting against foes. It's also a good idea to have two different damage types in your back pocket, just in case you come across some kind of resistance. Personally, I really like Chill Touch. It has great range, has average damage, but a great secondary effect of preventing the target from healing for a round. So tactically, it works really well against creatures that regenerate or rely on healing. This is damage that you won't have to deal later, so in my mind, that's basically extra damage that you're dealing. So uh, anything that you're fighting that heals or regenerates, you're actually doing a lot more damage than you think. I think Frostbite is also a good choice. It's a different damage type than Chill Touch and has another really good secondary effect of imposing disadvantage on the next attack roll that the creature makes. 
I generally don't like the cantrips that use saving throws instead of attack rolls, but this is one that's an exception because the secondary effect is actually pretty great. Next, we're going to go with Green Flame Blade. I generally feel cheesy picking up this spell, but this build is unconventional, and the reason we're choosing this cantrip is not why you're thinking. So we'll talk more about that later, but for now, you're probably just going to sit on this one for a couple of levels. So finally, your fourth cantrip should be a utility cantrip. I like Minor Illusion for its diversity of uses, but Mage Hand, Mending, Mold Earth, and Gust are also really good choices depending on the campaign that you're playing. You also know two level one spells, so it's important to make them count. At this level, you're extremely fragile, so one spell should be a defensive spell. Mage Armor is a decent spell, even if you won't be involved in melee combat at this level. I think that that's probably a good pick. Stay back and shoot from a distance, and you won't even need to use the shield spell, so I think uh, Mage Armor is probably going to be better than shield. Uh, eventually, we will want shield, but for now, stick with Mage Armor. Plus, you still have your failsafe, which is your Strength of the Grave ability, should you be hit by something that would otherwise take you down. For our second spell, I'm going to go with False Life. We're basically going to rely on cantrips for damage and utility in our first level spells for defense. This is a great way to get used to this playstyle, as later on you're going to be doing a similar thing in relying on Shadow Blade for mundane battles and using spells for mostly defense. A uh, quick note about Absorb Elements, it's a great spell and it's going to be something that we're gonna, definitely going to be taking later on, but just not at level 1. Since most creatures you face at this level don't tend to do elemental damage, it's probably good to wait on it. Now if your campaign happens to be one where you know that you're going to be facing elemental damage, then go ahead and take this spell right away. Alright, moving on to level 2. At this level you gain 2 sorcery points, which right now just let you gain an extra casting of a first level spell every long rest. Effectively, you have four spells that you can cast per long rest. You also learn an additional spell at this level. So this means that we can pick up a control spell. I like Color Spray a lot. Uh, this one affects more hit points than Sleep does. It's also less creatures are immune to it. And just like Sleep, there's no saving throw, which is really good. Uh, later on, as you're going to see with ability score increases, we're not really going to increase our spell casting ability. So spells that don't require saving throws are definitely going to be a plus here. Creatures are also um, way less likely to hit your party members if they're blind. So them being blind on your turn and on through the end of your next turn is actually a really good amount of time for them to be blinded without a saving throw. And you can either get away if necessary or, you know, get an advantage hitting them because they can't see you. Moving on to level three, at this level, we're going to be taking Shadow Blade. We also get to pick two meta magic abilities. We definitely want Quicken Spell. This is the second best of all the meta magics, and we're going to use this in almost every combat. Second, we're going to pick Extended Spell. Normally, I would say this is one of the worst meta magic abilities available, but with this build, it's actually going to save us a spell slot. And um, the way you do that, before you go into a long rest on any given day, you can cast Mage Armor and use Extended Spell on it. You can take your long rest, and then when you wake up, you're going to have all your spell slots and your sorcery points and still retain Mage Armor for an additional eight hours. So in this case, Extended Spell is going to save you a spell slot and a sorcery point. So that's really, really good. Definitely go for this. And for those of you who are th who are thinking about Twin Spell, the best meta magic in the game, Twin Spell is not a good meta magic for this build. And you'll you'll understand as we gain more spells and go over strategies, Twin Spell is just not going to be very useful for this. At least not in the early levels. We'll probably end up picking it up later. As the damage dealer for the party, we're going to want to maximize our damage output. So we're going to employ some strategies to do so starting at this level. In future levels, we're going to be in the thick of things, but for now we want to stay far enough away to stay safe because we have limited safety tools. Here are some simple tactics that you can employ in the meantime. You can stay ranged and cast color spray, blinding your opponent. Then you can use meta magic to reduce the casting time to one bonus action and cast a cantrip like chill touch to deal a little bit more damage. You'll gain an advantage on your chill touch, by the way. The following round, you're going to move in, cast Shadow Blade, and attack with advantage. 
because they are blind. And then you're going to move away before your blind opponent gains their vision back. And then from there, you can throw your shadow blade and keep a distance if necessary. Another great tactic, if instead as one of your cantrips, you end up picking Blade Ward, you can actually jump into the fray and then quicken Blade Ward as you use your actions to attack with Shadow Blade. And even though your armor class is still pretty bad, between having False Life on and damage reduction from Blade Ward, you can tank damage pretty, pretty well. Um, since you're taking half damage on most hits, your concentration save should be pretty manageable. It's definitely a risky strategy, but you're going to be doing some pretty decent damage. Starting at third level, this build performs pretty well, but remember that it's the type of character that you can't just try and wing tactics with. You always have to have a plan in order for it to work because you are still a glass cannon. Now, the final tactic involves Green Flame Blade which is going to help you with certain shenanigans. But before I go into this, I'd recommend speaking with your DM and making sure that they allow this to work. Basically, the tactic is going to involve a first round casting of Shadow Blade, followed by an attack with the blade, and then dealing 2d8 psychic damage on a creature. On the second round, you're going to want to use your spell points to quicken Green Flame Blade, which is going to allow you to make an attack as a bonus action with your Shadow Blade for 2d8 damage, and dealing 5 damage to a nearby foe. You can then use your action to attack with the blade for a second attack at 2d8 psychic damage. So at their level, if your DM allows this strategy, you're actually going to be getting two attacks per round, each one dealing 2d8 psychic damage. That's, that's more than any of the other uh, warriors, whether it's a fighter or barbarian, are going to be able to do. Doing, doing this strategy, you're probably going to be out damaging the fighter and the barbarian, um, especially if you're getting advantage on your attacks with the, with the shadow blade. You're more than likely going to be doing some critical hits here and there. So it is not a thing that's sustainable long term because every round it's going to use up sorcery points and you don't have that many to start with. But as you gain levels, it's going to be something that's more sustainable for a longer amount of time because that's mostly what you're going to be using your sorcery points for. You'll be getting two attacks each doing psychic damage for 2d8 or more as you progress in levels and dealing pretty decent damage uh, and sometimes attacking with advantage which is pretty awesome so by level three level four you're going to be out damaging pretty much anybody but again i recommend you check with your dm for their interpretation of quicken spell and if that will allow for this to work Anyway, let's move on to level 4. So if your DM is playing with feats, I'd highly recommend selecting tough. This is going to improve your survivability tremendously. Two extra hit points per level does add up. And I know you're asking your screen right now, why not Warcaster? After all, Shadow Blade is a concentration spell, and if you're going right into the thick of battle, increasing your chance of losing concentration you know, is, is definitely a thing. So as a sorcerer, you're proficient in constitution saves. And at this level, you're, you're not going to be taking significant enough damage per hit to need more help with concentration. But your survivability is always going to be an issue. So that's a valid point. Uh, I do highly recommend doing everything possible to keep yourself alive while you're dealing damage. If your DM is not allowing feats in their campaign, then I'd recommend boosting your dexterity. Because most of your spells are going to be used defensively, you're not going to really need to pump your charisma just yet, and boosting your dexterity is going to help you with getting um, hits in with your Shadow Blade, because they're going to boost your attack rolls with the Shadow Blade, and it's going to land more often. At this level, you also gain an additional known spell. I recommend going with Absorb Elements at this point. It's going to boost your defenses further and potentially deal more damage on attacks on a round where you take elemental damage. You're also going to get an extra cantrip. I think Blade Ward is handy, and against certain foes, you may be well off using Quicken spell on Blade Ward while attacking with Shadow Blade as your action in order to tank some serious damage. And with your boosted hit points with False Life, you'll be fairly tanky if you can Blade Ward every round as a bonus action while attacking with your Shadow Blade. So on to level 5. Here you're going to learn an additional spell and also gain the ability to cast third level spells. So go all out and pick up either Fireball or Lightning Bolt. You're going to be upcasting Shadow Blade to third level so that each attack now deals 3d8 psychic damage. So if you're fighting hordes on the second round or subsequent turn, you can actually quicken a Fireball or Lightning Bolt 
dealing 88 damage to a crowd or your current opponent, and then turn around and hit them with your Shadow Blade for 2d8. So you're pretty much limited to doing this only once per long rest, but then after that you can do the green flame blade trick after you've blown your load. And you can make it even more tasty if you manage to take elemental damage and use absorb elements before your turn to really dish out some additional damage. At level 6 you get the ability called Hound of Ill Omen. It's a really cool ability, but unfortunately for this build, it's just not going to be very useful. There'll be times when you'll want to grant someone disadvantage on saving throws. Like if you're going to lightning bolt a boss or something, then the Hound of Omen is going to give them disadvantage on the save, which is good because you haven't boosted your charisma, so they're probably going to be facing a very low DC save. Uh, and they'll pass but if you give them disadvantage with the Hound of Ill Omen then you're going to probably be on par with the other spellcasters so it'll be useful for those times but it is kind of pricey it costs three sorcery points so it's something you're not going to use very very often and you're not really targeting people with saving throw spells so this ability unfortunately does go to the wayside so I was talking earlier about suboptimal choices this is going to be one of them unfortunately but this build is all meant to make shadow blade work and that's going to be the star of the show so the hound of omen keep it in your back pocket it's an extra thing that you have an extra trick that you have if you happen to need it at this level you also get to learn another spell and this time i recommend picking up shield this spell is going to cement your defensive package and free you to pick up some more interesting spells later on and moving forward. At level 7 you gain another spell known and you can cast 4th level spells. I wouldn't upcast Shadow Blade to 4th level because it doesn't really scale up from 3rd to 4th. Instead I highly recommend learning Vitriolic Sphere. Not only is it a pretty solid damage spell, but it's also a decent area of effect and no concentration requirement which is awesome. Most 4th level sorcerer spells are concentration spells, except for Blight, Ice Storm and Vitriolic Sphere. Because you're going to be concentrating on Shadow Blade, concentration spells are spells you're not going to use very often. So go with one of these three. Um, and Vitriolic Sphere is a really powerful uh, spell, so I would I would most likely choose that. Ice Storm is also a pretty good choice. Blight I wouldn't take because it's single target, unless you're fighting a lot of plants. If you're in your campaign, you're fighting a lot of plant-based things, then Blight is probably a good choice. But otherwise, I'd go with Vitriolic Sphere as my primary, or Ice Storm if you didn't want to take that one. So alternatively, uh, during an adventuring day, if you don't think that you're going to need the AOE from like Vitriolic Sphere, instead you can upcast False Life to fourth level and really get those hit points up to the melee combatant levels. And um, so before we continue, let's check out our spell selection so far. Our cantrips allow for range attacks and some defense. First level and second level spells are all defensive except for color spray, which doesn't require saving throw, and shadow blade, which uses your dexterity to be effective. Third and fourth, we have a couple of blast spells which require saving throws for like half damage. And the only concentration spell we have is shadow blade. So far, we don't have too much need for a high charisma, Cantrip damage spells should only be needed as a last resort, and our blast spells are mostly being used against groups of foes, so some are going to end up failing the saving throws anyways. So because of this, when we reach level 8, we're going to be boosting our dexterity once more with our ability score increase instead of charisma. If you already somehow have a 20 in dexterity, go ahead and boost your constitution score instead. This is going to improve your hit points and also your concentration saves. At level 8, we also get to learn another spell. This time, I'm going to go for Misty Step. This spell is going to open up our tactics during combat and allow us to teleport around the battlefield as needed. It's also helpful for getting across chasms and such, as well as reaching higher ground that you otherwise would have no way of reaching, so it does have some utility. At level 9, you gain a 5th level spell slot and learn another spell. If you want another option for blasting, the clear winner here is Synaptic Static. Not only does it do amazing damage, but it's also a fantastic secondary effect without requiring concentration. Even better than that is the fact that it requires an intelligence saving throw. Very few enemies, especially at this level, have proficiency or even a bonus to intelligence saves. This helps maximize your damage output, especially with your charisma being behind other characters' main stats at this level. 
but your main priority for your single level five slot is upcasting shadow blade so this is going to allow an entire combat at dealing 48 per attack and if your dm allowed your boost with green flame blade you're going to be doing a second attack at 48 plus 1d8 fire you'll be very likely to hit on both attacks if you happen to be in dim light or darkness so your chance of dealing a critical hit at some point during the combat is pretty high even paladins are going to be impressed by your damage at this point at least single target damage just remember that you always have to keep your safety protocols in place dealing that much damage consistently is going to have enemies looking to swarm you and your fragile defenses means that you can be easily overcome by damage if you're not careful and enemies will know that so they will definitely be targeting you keep that in mind okay moving on so at level 10 at this level you gain an extra option for your meta magic i'm gonna take distance spell here none of the others are particularly useful for this build but extending the range of your blast spells can come in handy once in a while you also learn another spell. Here you can get something to help with utility or another defensive spell. Teleportation circle, dimension door, water breathing, tongues, thunder step, haste, fly, blink, and mirror image are all good picks. Remember that your charisma is below par. So if you pick a spell that grants a saving throw, you may want to pick a different meta magic to help mitigate that. Something like heightened spell works well in this circumstance. At level 11, you hit the third tier of play. Here, your green flame blade becomes 2d8 to the initial damage and 2d8 plus your ability modifier for the second creature. Although you get a six level spell, your shadow blade doesn't scale at level six. Again, it's a perfect opportunity to get some cool utility spells or upcast other blast spells, or even, to be honest, false life. If you upcast false life to level six, you're gonna add 1d4 plus 29 hit points. That's really significant, especially since you're going frontline. So something to think about. Or you can upcast color spray and blind creatures up to 16 D10 worth of hit points with no saving throw. So <laughs> imagine that a first level spell upcast to six, but damn, no saving throw. That's pretty awesome. Um, or, you know, you can even fire off a lightning bolt or a fireball for 11 D6 damage saving for half so that's the way you're gonna use your six level spell slots more than likely after level 11 just keep taking spells in the same vein as what we've been taking at this point utility spells are a great choice as high level play begins to challenge you beyond just tough combat and having several ways to solve problems will start to become very useful outside of combat i'm not going to go beyond level 11 mostly because high level play is not as common and i think you get the gist of what this build is attempting to do plus uh this build you know say at level 20 it's just not going to hold up it's meant to be a mid uh, a low tier to mid tier build that really uh stands out at between level three and four and also uh, does very very well uh around level eight eight or nine so you know just uh, just keep that in mind that this build is meant for low to mid level play not high level play but if you want to continue on it's not going to be that bad you're going to be fairly you know fairly average at the higher levels and you'll be able to do quite a bit because you are a full spell caster so just keep picking those utility spells and you should be fine this build is clearly a prime example of what a glass cannon is with powerful melee damage and some ways to deal with crowds if needed it also eventually gets more diversity and utility as the levels go by, making for a far more interesting character than your typical fighter or barbarian. So let me know if you like this build or if you do things a little bit different. I'd love to hear alternative builds and strategies with Shadow Blade for single class sorcerers. And I do hope this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and click like if you'd like to see more videos like it. I am your innkeeper, and this is the Twisted Tentacle Inn. Check in anytime. I'll talk with you then. Another great tactic is to just jump into the fray and quicken Blade Ward as you... Mm, don't want to do that.